a shift in your life. There's a shift in your household. There's a shift at Newburgh. There's a shift in those who are streaming this morning. I don't care where you are all around the world. Things are shifting right now on your behalf. So I want you to go ahead and celebrate God in advance. Because what you're believing for, your natural eyes are going to see what you're believing for. You're watching Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. Here is today's powerful message, Hope Now. Hope is all throughout the Bible. Hope is all throughout the Bible. So I want everybody to stand when we, as we read. Let's go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Uh, the friend of Jesus has passed away. His name is Lazarus, and Jesus was friends with uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and he's passed away. And there are certain things that we need to identify here in the scriptures today, and uh, we're going to see what God has to say to us here at New Birth and around the world, because so many people are streaming in uh, that we have to acknowledge them because we're not alone. We're not alone. Amen? John chapter 11, I'm going to start reading in verse 30. John chapter 11 verse 30. Thank God for all of our first-time guests and those who are uh, revisiting us, and we, we pray that you get attached and stay. That's what we want. We don't want you to just visit. We want you to be a part of this great family. John chapter 11, verse 30. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in his spirit, or in the spirit, and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again groaned in himself and came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. And now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who, who had died came bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Father, we bless you. We honor you in this great house among these great people. Uh, as we stream around the world, we believe, God, that you're doing some amazing things, and you will continue to do amazing things in our midst. And, Father, this is just the beginning, the threshold of the mighty things that you would do in the midst of your people. So, Father, I yield myself to you that you would bring even greater levels of hope on the inside of me, that greater levels of hope would come to your people. For there are certain things that you desire to do you cannot do unless we believe and we have hope. But, Father, we believe that there's so much 
hope in our lives right now that anything and everything is possible. So, Father, we yield ourselves completely to you, our hearts, our mind, our ears, and we begin to now believe. Hope is here, and hope is now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord and... Uh, we want to make sure that we acknowledge Lady Vanessa without everybody looking at her and clapping for her. We just like to make sure that she knows that we know that she's here and we really appreciate her presence every single time. I told y'all don't clap. I told y'all don't stare. But we love the matriarch of this house. I want to I want to take you through a few things here that I believe are going to be very helpful to you, especially in the times that we're living in. We know that that more uh, destruction has gone on, even in London, and we're we're trying to make sense of many things that are going on around us. But we believe that God is doing something in the midst of us while many things are going on around us. So I want to ask you a question here: At what point do you lose hope? At what point do you lose hope? At what point do you lose hope? And I, I want you to think about that for a moment because uh, in the passage of Scripture that we read, we were seeing where Martha and Mary were losing hope more and more. At what point do you lose hope? At what point do you lose hope when you get your doctor's uh, report? Do you lose hope when you... Uh, uh, get the judgment from the judge? Do you lose hope uh, when your child comes home and, and tells you that they're pregnant or they have a, a disease that has been transferred to them? Do you, do you lose hope when the uh, police officers pull up at the front of your house and they hadn't even given you any news yet? Where, where exactly do you begin to lose hope? When you, do you lose hope when you get the notice that you're four months behind on your mortgage? Do you lose hope when you are being served papers that your husband or wife no longer wants to be married to you? Where, where exactly do you lose hope? Do you lose hope when you get the call from the appointment, when you uh, went into the doctor to have that evaluation, and now the call comes and it says that you have stage four cancer? Where, where exactly do you lose hope? And I want to ask you that because it's very important that when you get a report or things that, that are distasteful happens that you don't lose lose hope so early. So I want to walk you through some things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the runway. We came up with a term because I can take off so fast. Sometimes I don't use the runway. But since we're so close to the major airport here in Atlanta, I'm going to use the runway today. And I'm not going to take off as fast, but I'm going to get you there. And we're going to travel very, very high. And I believe we're going to travel so high, the demon force of, of hopelessness is can't go to the altitude that you're going to. And I believe if we get high, high enough, you'll stop doubting what God has promised you. But you got to get beyond the snake level, and which means that snakes can't go to high altitude. And I think the demon of hopelessness has tried to latch on to your life and tell you you're not going to have what God promised you. But I came to tell you that the devil is a liar. If we keep going higher, you will find that that whisper of the enemy is no longer in existence in your ears, talking you out of what you know God told you and every now and then you got to get a little bit higher than a church service and sometimes you just got to press in just a little bit more because there's a certain place where the devil's not talking and if he's talking a whole lot to you that's an announcement to you that you need to increase your altitude and get just a little bit higher and get in those places that Jesus said you're seated in heavenly places where Christ Jesus is and I don't think the devil was sitting up there having a conversation with Jesus and God but you were in that conversation and if I can get you to just to go just a little bit higher I believe I can get you out of that conversation that's not working for you right now and get you into a conversation where that will cause you to thrive and it doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now and in a bad situation God can still be good and God's just looking for some people to be good to even while they have a bad situation I know you you just don't know Bishop yes I do know I'm a human being I live in this earth. I have problems.
problems. I have things going on, but I just told the devil, you're not going to affect my life when God is speaking into my life. And if I came to church, I didn't come to worship my problem. I came to worship the living God. So my problem is not on my mind because if my problem is on my mind, I am not in worship because worship is focused on God and I'm not focused on my bank account. I'm not focused on the negative report I got. I'm not focused on the argument I had with my husband or wife. I'm not focused on the rain outside because I got a rain on the inside. I know I'm preaching before I start preaching, but I've been on fire for an entire week and I don't think I'll cool off anytime soon because somebody needs hope in this place. And if you get enough hope, you'll stop looking down and out and we won't have to keep calling you to attention. You'll stand up every morning as you get out your bed and call yourself into subjection to the power of God's word and tell yourself this is a day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to take a break next week, Lady Vanessa. I'm not going to preach Wednesday. Elder Stokes is going to minister Wednesday. But I, I, want to, I want to see a lot of you guys that I don't see on Wednesday night because it's been too long. I've been here over nine months, and we haven't even hugged yet. And I want to hug Wednesday night. So I want you to get that anointing on you to fight your way through that traffic. You don't know who's going to be greeting you at the door. Not going to tell you whether I'm going to be there or not. But I want to see you. I want to touch you. Because I do exist. I'm not just on the television screen and standing on this platform and I fade out after I'm done. I am flesh and blood. Amen. Let's, let's talk just for a few minutes. I want to give you about three points, and I have to ask you, the question was, at what point do you lose hope? At what point do you lose hope? Number one, Martha said, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. Martha, listen to this, Martha had hope before the death of Lazarus. So when Lazarus was sick, she was fine. When he was laying on the bed, she was fine. But when he died, she thought, this is a hopeless situation. So you have to be careful as you go through life where you grade where, where you're going to give up on God. Where you grade where you're going to give up on God. So Martha decided after death, it was over. And I know in the natural, every time somebody experienced a death, and uh, there's things that happen, but you don't become hopeless because of a death. Lazarus died, but it wasn't over yet. Now, I got to ask you, I know we believe a lot in what's going on out there, but I can't keep reading my Bible and be a doubter. I have to believe the Word of God. So I believe what God wrote in the Word. I believe that when uh, Martha uh, saw the death of her husband, she began to give, uh, not her husband, excuse me, her brother, she gave up hope. She let go. She told Jesus, if you had been here, if you had gotten here a day early, he'd still be alive. If, if, you were to, if you were to showed up at the hospital, he'd still be alive. If you would have had the time to get off the plane and get here, he would still be alive. If you were in town when we called for you, because the Bible said he stayed a little bit longer after he heard that Lazarus was sick. So when Jesus got there, Lazarus was dead, and he, she said to him, if you had been here, as if that's the only way that life could be in the man. Now, we're going to break it down. We're not talking about literal death for you. We're just talking about whatever that is that's in your life that you've given up on. Because some of you, it's a dead marriage. Because most people have vision for marriage, but when division comes in the house, what it does, what, you, what happens to you is you no longer see yourself married to that person and then division and people start splitting up. What made you say your marriage was dead? What made you think that your finances was dead? What made you think this church was dead? 
Oh, let's just bring it home. What, what made you think that that new birth would never be revived? What, what made you think that we would never get up again? What made you, and then it doesn't mean that, that, that you stay away. You can still come and not believe that anything would happen. You, you can be out there screaming and think it's over. But I came to tell you there's a certain point that you have to make up your mind. Even though it seems over, I'm still going to have hope. And here it is, Martha believes that it's all over over because now he's dead and it just goes in a pattern it, it progressively moves forward hopelessness will progressively move from one place to the next place and said if you'd been here he would not have died well he wasn't there and Lazarus died number three stay with me here I'm going to take you through some things I, I got to be a little bit of a teacher for a minute before I become a preacher because you know how you guys are you don't just shout because somebody's talking. Number two, Martha said, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Martha has hope before four days. Now, this is to study, and this is not just, a, this is not biblical, but this is a, a proverb that went on with the Jews, that if, he, if a resurrection was going to take place, it had to take place before the fourth day. This is a proverb, because what they thought and they believed that, that the spirit would hover over the body up until the fourth day, and when it came to the fourth day, there were, all hope was gone at that time. So here it is, Martha has come to the conclusion, she's already said, Jesus, if you had been here, he never would have died. Next thing she said, by this time he stinketh, it had been four days, and now all hope is completely gone because he's dead, because it's the fourth day, and then she said, by now he stinketh meaning he had begun to decay and his body had begun to break down and she assumed that that condition was saying that there is no more hope I don't know where you what you think is hopeless but it, even if it's in the worst place God can still do something with that can I help somebody in here God can still do something with that business I know they they have chains on the doors and locks on the doors but it's not over yet God has a bigger place for you and sometimes one thing has to stop so the other thing can start but it's not over just stay with me here we're not having a funeral we're just talking about where people begin to give up they begin to throw the towel in because of their false evaluation of the power of God I don't think she even though they were friends I don't think she realized who she was talking to Sometimes we come to church and we don't realize what type of environment we're in. Look at your neighbor, tell them anything can happen in this environment. This is feast season. So anything that was dead can be resurrected in a season like this. Don't you dare be confused and perplexed in a season like this when God is moving and hovering over. Maybe his spirit, Lazarus' spirit wasn't hanging around, but God's spirit was still around. So stay with me here. I'm going to walk through it a little bit, and I'm probably coming off of this platform because I need to get a little bit closer to you so you can feel that I'm alive because I'm not dead. I'm here, and I'm ready, and I believe there's some people sitting out there that know that God's ready to do something amazing for you, and I want to make it real personal right now. He does things corporately, but he also does things individually, and I want to stir your faith, and I want to stir your hope so much that something on the inside of you starts leaping and jumping and said, it's not over until God says it's over. Jesus groaned on the inside, but he didn't say it was over. He was just trying to find some people out there that the Jews were mourning, Mary was mourning, Martha was mourning. Is there anybody out there excited about another day that something good can happen? Even though you've been through a little bit of hell, there's still some good stuff that can happen in your life. You can't tell me that my worst days have already canceled out my best days. That is not the truth. I, I live another day I have another opportunity to see God show up and show out and that's why I stay excited even in my trial I stay excited because I know God is up to something major in my life and guess what in your life as well so in the in the mind of Martha Jesus had been there we could have fixed this 
now that you're here, it's been four days. His body has begun to deteriorate. There's an aroma. There's a smell. We don't even want to deal with that. Jesus said, take the stone away. Jesus said, take that stone away. You, you'd be surprised when you get in certain uh, situations how you roll a stone over that thing and said, nothing else is going to happen. Let me, let me just help you out. I, I believe that people in the community, they didn't mean no harm to you, but they rolled a stone in front of new birth. Because they didn't think anything else was going to happen. I, I believe some, some leaders possibly rolled a stone in front of the educational departments and the, and the uh, discipleship departments because they thought nothing else was going to come out. And they said, only thing that's going to come out of here is a stench now. But I came to tell you, there's a sweet-smelling Savior coming up out of this place right now. I said, there's an aroma that God is attracted to coming up out of this place right now because God has the ability to reach in a tomb and whatever was dead, make it live again. And I came to tell you, I don't know how dead you've been, but I do know this is the day on tabernacle season that you were going to come alive again and you're never going to doubt whether that God can work in any and all situations and circumstances because God is God. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. There may be a stone blocking the door of your miracle and unbelief all around you, but never lose hope. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again. Stay with me. This is my last point. There may be a stone blocking the door of your miracle and unbelief all around you, but never lose hope. There may be a stone of opposition. Everybody don't believe you're going to come back. Everybody doesn't believe you're going to recover. Some stones of doubt and unbelief are already placed in your life. Not only are you blocked out, but you're blocked in. What's on the inside is what Jesus was after because there was a man inside that wasn't done with his relationship with his sisters. And Jesus knew how much everybody was weeping and Jesus understood this plan for this man's life and destiny is not over. And what you have to understand when destiny is not over, don't lose hope while God still has hope in you. Jesus still had hope. Jesus still could see that there was more that was going to happen. In fact, you got to get ready because the people who wanted to kill you first are not the real enemy. There are some people who wanted to kill Lazarus to make God look like he didn't exist. And if you read on just a little bit, you find out that they wanted to kill Lazarus because Lazarus represented the fact that Jesus was the son of God. And I want to tell somebody in here, the reason the devil wants to take you out this time is because he knows you're a validation that Jesus is really real and Jesus is the one that brings recovery and Jesus is the one that brings increase and Jesus is the one that heals and Jesus is the one that delivers and Jesus is the one that cat set the captive free and Jesus is the one that sends financial resources from the north, south, east, and west and Jesus is the one that's going to rule in this house now and forevermore and it doesn't matter what's been happening to you, you need to start shouting about what God is doing for you because God's doing some amazing things right now and there's no devil in hell that can stop it and in fact, hell's terrified of your getting up day, and that's why we got to muster up just enough hope to see a resurrection take place. You may come out of the tomb. You may be bound up. You may have something around your face, but I decree and I declare on this day, loose them and let them go. There's a tendency to dress you like you're never coming back. Oh, you didn't hear me. There's a tendency to dress you like you're never coming back. But when God shows up, your comeback is already here. And Jesus, this is the strategic thing that he done. He began to thank God before he prayed. You need to thank God right now, not when you start seeing results. You need to thank God. Thank God 
that your son and daughter are off the street back into the house of God. Thank God that the finances are already returned. Thank God. Jesus said, I thank you that thou hast heard me. You already answered me before I prayed. You ever heard, don't wait until the battle is over, shout now? Is there anybody in here that's in a battle and you need to shout right now? I know stuff go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know it's been a hard ride. I know there's been some decline, but there's a bounce back on the inside of you. I know Elder Heath is watching right now, but there's a bounce back on the inside of you, and you need to start shouting about it, praising God about it, because you have enough hope that gets you out and take you to the destiny that God has for you. And I don't care what they're saying. You need to rejoice over what God said. Ah, I feel something up in here. I feel somebody gaining that hope. It doesn't matter how bad it was. It doesn't matter how bad it's been. It's about to get better. I dare you to put it in the atmosphere. It is better. <laughs> Woo! You want to stop me, you got to take my Bible from me. Because every time I flip it over, I start seeing hope in that word. And if God can get Lazarus up, he can get you up too. And I don't care how low you are, don't you dare settle for where you are. Because this is your time to rise up from that dark, desolate, stinking place. God has a future for you, and you need to embrace it. See, God believed in y'all so much that, uh, you know, I'm the type of person I go into a home going service and turn it into a celebration service. I came to tell you this is celebration time. I know that, that, that here, here, Mary and Martha had all type of people around them helping them to grieve, but we need somebody to help us to celebrate. I believe First Lady Long, the matriarch of this house, needs some people that'll help her to celebrate now. I believe that in this house right now, there's an outbreak of celebration that's happening right now. I know we mourn, we mourn long enough. Now it's time for us to rise up and give God the praise he deserves because we're still here and we're not losers we're winners we're not the tail we're the head we're not underneath we're above only hey can't nobody stop us now we're on the way to great success and the resurrection will speak louder than the death <laughs> if you'd like to order today's message hope now Call us to get a copy today. Dial 1-800-98-JESUS. That's 1-800-985-3787. Or log on to newbirth.org. Thank you for watching Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. Find us, like us, connect with us. Join us every Sunday morning for our worship service at 9.30 a.m. and our empowerment service every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We are New Birth.